And so we go live to the House floor for West Virginia's 2018 State of the State Address. Ready to address the Joint Assembly for which we have been called together. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. one question before we really get into the nitty-gritty. Last year when I came in and spoke, it was 700 degrees. <laughs> How can it be 65 degrees or whatever outside right now and 85 in my office and whatever it is in here? But uh, let's just hope this, that this is the hottest it gets in here for the next 60 days. <laughs> well, first of all, ooh. Okay, baby doll. Okay. We'll try that again. First of all, let me thank our speaker, Tim Armstead, for having us here. Thank our president, Mitch Carmichael. Thank you, delegates and our senators. And thank the great people of this unbelievable state. You know, today is a special day. A special day that somewhere, somewhere my tackle box and axe is still kind of right with us. We didn't need to leave it in a bag. <laughs> but the only reason I bring it is just this. I said before it wouldn't leave my vehicle, and it doesn't. Because we don't need to quit until every single person is not standing on the side of a bridge saying, Mister, you don't have any idea how bad I'm hurting. West Virginians were really hurting. And today, you're gonna to have a hard time to keep me from smiling and smiling an awful lot. You know, Butch, that's good. I, well, first of all, I'll just show you my tackle box and my ax. And it's with me all the time. And it does good stuff for me. Now, let me tell you this about smiling. The reason you won't be able to not get me to smile today is a lot, a lot, a lot of good news about our state, no question. But in addition to that, 
on December 7th, late in the evening, our daughter, Kathy and I's daughter, Jill, and her beautiful husband, Adam, Jill gave birth to a pretty good sized little boy, nine pounds, five ounces. And Jill's got it kind of halfway figured out. She's got, she's here with us tonight and Adam's watching the baby. So, so Adam, we thank you in every way. And just as Charles Long, with a head full of hair that's dark colored, and we're already working on his left hand that he'll be able to dribble with his left hand. You know, he's with us now, our first grandchild, and we, we are so excited, so happy, so blessed. Now let me tell you this. I've thought a lot about what's happened in the last 12 months. And to be perfectly honest, you or the people that are listening to me, you can't fathom what the level of the miracle has been. Now, you can't fathom how dire it was. And you can't imagine how promising it looks. I'll get into all that, but I oftentimes said to myself, well, you know, how can it be? You know, I feel like I came up with some pretty decent ideas, big ideas. It's kind of what I do. But at the same time, I truly mean this. I'm not capable of the ideas that I presented to you. I truly, truly give credit to the good Lord every single day for any and all. Now, if you'll just think, though, forever we struggled a little bit. In fact, we struggled maybe a lot. At times, we were always in a contest with Mississippi. Who was going to be last and who was going to be in 49th place? Well, something has happened. Something that I feel is just this. And again, I feel this because I think I'm here for a reason, and you are too. Now, if you'll just think, we had great players. We've always had great players. You're great players. All those that are listening to me are great players. We've had all kinds of opportunities in the most beautiful, unbelievable state there could possibly be. The only thing that I was able to bring you is I was your coach. I was a coach that maybe, maybe got the players running in the same direction. Maybe got the passion going the right way. Did it for the right reason. Didn't do it to please a party or didn't do it to gain status or something for myself. Did it because I love you. I really truly do. I didn't do it because you were union or non-union or rich or poor or black or white. I didn't do it because you were Dems or Republicans. I did it because you were West Virginians. And I think with all my soul, if I was able to give you anything, it was just that. The ability to maybe be your coach, to maybe be what a governor is really supposed to be. A governor is supposed to be just that. But so often we get drifted, we drift into a lot of different things that maybe motivate us in wrong ways. Now, before we go any further, I've got to show you this. And this will bring back some memories, if I can get it out of here. Now, you can clap if you'd like. 
Now, at the same time, I've got four of these that we're delivering. <laughs> and we're delivering to our speaker and our president and Tim Miley and Roman Prezigoso. Now, they're a little bit different. If you'll open them up, and I got one for myself because I didn't think they'd give me one. It's got a big giant Hershey kiss. It's got a wonderful WVU or West Virginia type boutonniere. And it's got an eight track tape that says happy days. If I, could, if I could give, can I give you this? Okay. Now, only briefly do I want to belabor the past with you. And I don't know which is which, but Butch, unveil the one, and I'm going to stay back here. And I'm going to scoot myself a little bit closer here. Okay. Let me tell you, when I got here, this is what we were facing. Like it or not like it. When I got here, it was in the middle of the 1617 year, or really I guess the 17, yeah, the 1617 year. We were supposed to have a balanced budget, but it looked like we were going to come up because severance and everything kept running away from us. It looked like things could even be more dire and we could very well have a $200 million hole in the bucket. The next year, my first full year, $497 million in the, bucket, in the hole. And the years thereafter that, going all the way up to $722 million. Now, I said a minute ago, you know, just imagine the miracle that has happened. The miracle that's happened is not sitting here. The miracle that happened is you. The miracle that happened is the people at home. The miracle that has happened to each and every one of us is just this. It was really unfair to think that what I wanted to do was just come in and say, oh, we got a hole in the bucket, let's just raise taxes. That's the last thing on earth I wanted to do. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to turn. You see, we all know we'd already drained rainy day. We had. Our bonds were being derated. We didn't know where to go. We had to have a bridge, didn't we? We had to have a bridge. Now, you had one guy in this room, and he's a big guy that's talking to you, that believed with all his heart that if we could pass our roads bond, the severance tax would truly continue to grow. If we made modifications to education, that we would actually get a response from the outside world. It's happening. It's happening like you can't imagine. Absolutely, in just a very, very short period, I'll be able to show you something that concludes just how amazing this trip has been. Now, let me ask you this. Can we stop where we're at? Well, of course not. Can we, get, can we get in our own way and have who knows what happen? Absolutely we can. But you know what? And I'll do this. I'll do this for Craig Blair. But, and Mike Hall, wherever Mike, Mike is over in here. But last year I said, if Frankenstein caught you, you deserve to die. And because Frankenstein walked like this, did he not? Now, I would say just this. When we passed our road bond referendum, when we made our changes in education, and when our severance really started to take off, and when companies on the outside world just started to see how truly great we really are, it started to happen. Dr. Frankenstein stood when he built the monster 
And he took the paddles and hit it. And then he took the, the, the pulse. And he could hear a pulse. And he said, it is alive. Well, we're alive. And we're moving now. And we're moving like you can't imagine. Now, where do we go? What's the next things we do? Well, the first thing we got to do is just this. We have to stop. We have to stop this terrible drug epidemic. We have to. If we don't, it will cannibalize us. You know, just recently we had to dispatch the National Guard to Huntington to try to stop the terrible shootings that were going on in Huntington. You know, we know we have to, be, we have to build treatment facilities or we have to have additional social workers or we have to do additional law enforcement. Do we not? Of course we do. But now just think and think with me. There's still something we're missing. There's still something out there we're missing. And so the other day I told our people, I said, I want you to do this. I want you to find the smartest people in the land that can find and tell us what we're missing here. And lo and behold, in rolls a doc from WVU. Now today, just as we talk, WVU with the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute, words that are almost too complicated for me to even speak, what they're doing there is they're bringing docs in from all over the world that are going to do the most landmark stuff that you can possibly imagine. One of these doctors brought to me a vial about this big. It probably had 30 chips in it. They were the size of a third of a size of maybe a grain of rice. He said it may very well be that they can cure the opioid addiction. They can take away the craving with one of those chips that'll last for a year. It is unbelievable what's happening right there in our state at our home university. And so please, please understand that I'm going to support them in every way that I possibly can in this strife to try to combat this terrible drug epidemic. They're all in. Now, I can tell you that this will be a quickie. This is called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Every year, for the last three years, we've been late getting it done. And by late getting it done, what had happened to us was we were put on a five-year probation by the federal government. And it's punitive to our higher eds. It hurt us. Well, I can proudly say, today, it's done. It's done. <laughs> now, I'd like to recognize some really, really important people. My family's over here on the right-hand side. My dear wife, and I can't see her, but she looks pretty tonight. And uh, Kathy is uh, really special in many, many ways. You know, just a couple days ago, I was on the way home, and she called me, and we have an underwater treadmill. And it's a pool-type room. She called me to tell me, and she said, Jim, where are you? And I said, I'm in Dawson, and I'm about 25 minutes away. She said, Jim, the dogs have locked me in the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> so there is nobody more loving and no more caring, but there are events that happen at our house from time to time. And right beside Kathy is our beautiful daughter, Jill just gave birth to our grandson. And right behind, beside Jill, is Catherine and Jay. Jay is our son, and Catherine's his beautiful wife, and she some way somehow puts up with him, and I'm very proud that she pulls that off. Now, somewhere in the gallery here, we have 
an incredibly special person in our Teacher of the Year, Caitlin Torschel. Is, is that the correct pronunciation? Where is Caitlin? Please. See, Caitlin, they clapped a lot more for you than they did me. <laughs> Somewhere Dr. Clay Marsh is with WVU. So if Clay Marsh would stand, we've got to give him a big round of applause. Clay. <laughs> Great job. Dr. Dr. Gee and Dr. Gilbert are somewhere if they haven't fallen down the steps or something here. <laughs> Now, I don't know how flattering it is to say you're a university president and you keep falling down. I mean, you know, that's, but uh, I'd like you to give a great big round of applause for our chief of staff and all of our secretaries here because they've done an incredible, incredible job. If y'all please stand. Now, if we could jump over to one of my pet peeves, and that's education. I think it truly needs to be the centerpiece of everything we do. I've thought that all along. I think we need to pay our teachers more. I've said that in the past. Somehow we're blessed beyond belief with the State Board of Education that is truly, truly doing an amazing job. So please give them a round of applause. If y'all would stand wherever you are. <laughs> Two Kathy's, my wife Kathy and Kathy D'Antoni are doing an incredible job with communities and schools to be able to help kids to maybe be able to get to their end goals. Now, today, today, and I just found out two things educationally just a few minutes ago. Today, I think our state board unanimously passed, and I called 2510, which basically allows counties flexibility in regard to things like band and show choir and drama and things that in this state so many kids <laughs> wanted to participate. They wanted to participate. And you know how it was when you grew up. And the bands were gigantic, and kids had an incredible time and an incredible learning experience there. We can't all be LeBron James. They had a great, great experience there. In some way, they just passed, they said unanimously, 2510 that granted districts further flexibility to maybe give those districts an opportunity to promote bands, promote show choirs, to promote drama, promote the arts. It's good stuff. Just In addition to that, at 515 today, believe it or not, but secret the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, called me to tell me that our plan, West Virginia's plan, for every student, it's called every, WV's Every Student Succeeds plan, was passed today. Now, let me say this about education. I've said it till I'm blue-green. Not everybody's cut out to the, for the traditional pathway of a four-year degree, and we know that, don't we? But you know what we don't know is just this, because I'm in the schools a lot, and I see it. 
If you're a student that likes to, you know, that wants to go into the trades and have an incredible job, and you're a student that loves the electricity or whatever it may be, in all honesty, a lot of times when you walk the halls, people may, other kids may look down on you a little bit. It's not fair. It's not right. Some way we have got to let those kids know that we got to have them. We got to build this workforce like we can't imagine. I want us to de develop a way to where kids in high school in the trades can get an associate degree while they're in high school. I also want us to add, if it's possible, a 13th year where they can get additional credit, accreditation or, or additional certifications. I know our president, Mitch Carmichael, is rock solid behind this, and I am too. I want somehow, some way, for us to be able to make our community and technical colleges free. Thomas Burton is not with us tonight. He's an Oak Hill native and I guess moved away and moved back. He's a retired vet. He says the reason he moved back is because you exempted his pay. You exempted his pay. You gave him the right to come home. And today, you know what he's doing? Our ex-governor, Earl Ray Thomas, had a project that he was immensely proud of at Hobet. And Hobet really was not going very far. It surely wasn't going as fast as what we would have all liked it to go. But between the likes of General Hoyer and the likes of Thomas Burton, today Hobet is on the move. Hobet is really going to become something fabulous. Absolutely, right now, we are moving towards doing training there that will save lives beyond belief and bring business and opportunity to this state that could be enormous, plus the fact that we're not going away from the development aspects of it, and today we're going to be able to save $70 million. I can, I can tell you Earl Ray's dream will become a reality, and that will be great. Now, there's another gentleman with us here tonight, Bird White. And Bird, wherever you are, stand up, please. Bird has agreed within the confines of our great secretary, Brother Dave, in our tax department, Bird has agreed to just this. One thing that we worry about all the time, it was said to me over and over and over along the trail, will the contractors pay their taxes? Will you collect their taxes? Absolutely, we need to make positive of that. So Bird is going to head up an enforcement division that is going to target and go right after just that. No one's ever liked Bird. He is perfect for this job. <laughs> now, we celebrate our coal miners going back to work, don't we? You know what we need to do? We need not to be satisfied with the numbers that we have back today. We need to be sure that those people are some way looked after from a safety standpoint, the very best they possibly can, 
or can be, but in addition to that, we have got to get more of our coal miners to work. It is an absolute unbelievable thing to travel down through the coal fields and see communities coming back to life. See the line at Dairy Queen, you know, being longer. Seeing people walk around on used car lots. They're coming back to life. But we've got to have more. We've got to have more and then more on top of that. It's nice to think about what our gas companies and their contributions are doing to the state of West Virginia. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And we thank them in every way. In this session here, we could very well have the opportunity to address co-tendency or maybe even joint development. Now, I would ask just this, that as we're able to give back or try to help, our gas companies need to come to the forefront too. And our, our, our landowners and our mineral owners, they all need to be protected. There's a way, there's a way to always do all this if we'll just get together and work it all out. Just to say, that won't pass if we put two things together, well, who would have thunk? Who would have thunk we would have been here tonight when you saw this right here last year? But we're here now. Just think of this just a second. I don't very often get to name something. You guys are famous for naming something like CL9623BC. And I don't have a clue what that ever means. But I'm going to call something JCTAW. And it's going to stand for Just Cut Taxes and Win. I want to start with is the elimination of the tax on manufacturing machinery and equipment and manufacturing inventory. Yeah. Y'all don't quit this clap and we're going to be here all blooming night. No, I appreciate you. I really do. One thing we've got to ensure is that education and our counties and our cities won't get hurt. We can do that. We can absolutely do that with this. Let me address a couple other things real quickly. Our state parks are in ill repair. We found enough money to be able to do significant repairs to our state parks, which will bring people here. The work that's going on in tourism and commerce is phenomenal, phenomenal. Think about this just for a second. Agriculturally, we all know that agriculture could be a sleeping giant in West Virginia, and I know a lot about agriculture, guys and girls, a lot, an awful lot. And I can tell you it's for real that we could have chicken houses or hog confinement buildings on, a, on, on, on mountaintop removal sites we could have vegetable or horticultural specialty crops grown and within a rock's throw of the marketplace. All of those things are for real possible because you know why? We have pristine water. We have manure disposal. We have absolutely a disease-free atmosphere, disease-free. We have relatively constant and not terrible temperatures except last week. <laughs> and maybe even right now, you know. But there's real possibilities there. We've got to put somebody on it, and I am going to put West Virginia State, Marshall University, and West Virginia University working this and bringing us real ideas as to what we can do. I'll be able to tell them very quickly, there's no way on this planet that that will work. 
or I'll be able to tell them, yes, that's the real deal. Now, we can't possibly not talk about China. You talk about an 800-pound gorilla in the room, not me, <laughs> but China is a possibility beyond all of our possible dreams. It could really happen. And the reason it could probably happen is two things. And these are trump cards that we have, and they're true trump cards. President Trump genuinely wants the trade imbalance with China to change. And President Trump has put his first step foot forward to say a big part of that change is going to happen in West Virginia. And I'll promise you, President Trump and I are friends, and President Trump doesn't want me calling him saying, Donald, why isn't it happening? You know? Now, do I believe that there's going to be $83 billion come rolling into West Virginia? It could very well happen. But I can't comprehend $83 billion. And I've traded in a great big arena. But imagine, Procter & Gamble is $500 million. If $1 billion comes, it's two Procter & Gamble plants. Imagine the magnitude of what we're talking about here. It's unbelievable. In the petrochemical business, in the natural gas hub, it is unbelievable. And we're on something and we're working it and you should be very proud of our commerce people, our relationship with President Trump on this issue, and all the goodness that everybody is putting in the licks and trying to do. So please give them a round of applause because it is a big thing. I proudly say we're going, we have enough money to be able to have a state police cadet class. The first time in probably four years. And I just as I glanced this way, I just, I, I thought, well, how, what a dumb bunny am I. We've got all of our justices here, and we've got Evan Jenkins, Congressman Jenkins, sitting right here, and some way, somehow, I just passed right by you. And the great John Perdue, who really brought me the idea in regard to being able to create and be able to get kids an associate degree in high school in the trades. So please give them a great round of applause. Our education department and DHHR are working tirelessly on an issue that is just, it's just not comprehensible again for me. Child sexual abuse. Imagine this. Every 18-year-old in West Virginia, one in 10 of them, one in 10 of them before they reach the age of 18, suffer some level of child sexual abuse. It's got to stop. It has to stop. And we're on it, and some way, somehow, we're going to stop it. Now, I've got to talk to you just a second about tourism and commerce. I put in the budget, I put, I put in <clears throat> my numbers rather, a giant number for tourism, $20 million. And you may think, well, can we not do something else with $20 million more than just put it into tourism? And I would say to you, it's super penny wise and pound poor if you think that's the thing not to do. The reason it's the thing not to do is just this. For every dollar that flows into tourism, it is unbelievable the multiplier effect that comes right back to us. We have got to market ourselves. At some point in time, you've got to get tired of waking up and watching the TV and watching the TV say, come to New York or come to Michigan. It's driving me crazy. 
some way, somehow, we've got to let the world know just how good we really are. The world is awakening right now. There's real opportunity. Commerce needs money to be able to bring people to us. It's the way the game works. We can do it today. We have a tremendous commerce secretary. We have Chelsea Ruby, who is doing an unbelievable job in tourism. There is so many areas of diversification that our highways and on and on will bring us. We got to get behind this with everything we have. Now, let me say this. Right in my neck of the woods, 27 years, 27 years, we've been planning and trying to get the Coalfields Expressway and the King Cole Highways moving. This spring, this spring, you'll see pavement going down. We're going to build the dead gum roads. It's going to happen. Now let me get to a little bit of the cherry on the top. Today, we know there's enough, enough money in the budget today. Imagine what I'm saying to you. Can you imagine it? I mean, we didn't have enough money to hardly go feed the dogs good. But we now have enough money to give every single person in state government a raise. And I'm really, really proud that we're going to be able to do that. We're going to be able to give our teachers a raise. We're going to give a 1% raise across the board to everyone this year and next year. And I'm budgeting in an additional one, one, and one on the teachers for the following three years and bringing them an entire five. We can do it. It's there right this minute and it can be done. Now, if some way, somehow, my little girl's basketball team is somewhere, and they said they're going to come here, so wherever they are, they need to get here and get here now. Oh, here we go. Y'all just stand right here around me. Some of y'all go, okay, all of y'all just stand right there, okay? Now, real quickly, this is Abby and AJ and Haley and Tucker and Autumn and Taylor and Gabby and Morgan and Lauren and Kendra and Naya and Lucia and Kate and Emma and Lexi and Elasia. <laughs> Now, let me tell you, y'all please sit, please sit. You stand. Okay. You know, in basketball, when the season begins, you're allowed to have two scrimmages. Our first scrimmage, we had 40 turnovers and we lost by a gazillion points. <laughs> and then we went to work because they're really young. A lot of times, we only have one senior in this group, and a lot of times there's two freshmen and three sophomores on the floor at the same time. Since that time, they've not lost a game. Just the other day, Just the other day, the AP poll came out and they're ranked second in the state. Now, now let me tell you this. Haley, who was second team all state last year, stand right here in the front, Haley. She had something wrong with her leg the other day. And Gabby, <laughs> Gabby, who is our enforcer here, 
Haley said, I said, what is this, coach? And I said, oh, I know what that is, Haley. That's a resistant pathway ringworm. <laughs> and it won't hurt you, but it eventually goes up your leg and it go through your face and it go away. And the only way you can get rid of it is you tie, you can tie knots around the places in your leg and it'll go away. And so I turned and winked at Gabby. The next thing I saw was Haley sitting in the floor with her sweatsuit on tying her legs up. <laughs> All the girls walked over and said, what are you doing? And then Haley said something a little smarter to Gabby, and Gabby said, well, at least I wasn't crazy enough to tie myself up. <laughs> but Haley and this group believe, and I told you before, you needed a coach, and you needed to believe in me. And I really would close just by just saying this. I know how talented you are as the players. And I mean it when I tell you that I love you with all my soul. You are an incredible force to deal with. At least give me the opportunity to be your coach and believe. Now, I want to end by doing this. I want y'all to go flip over that board right there. Yeah. Now, get out of the way where everybody can see. A year ago, this is where we stood. Today, that's where we are. It is unbelievable the six-year plan that you are able to see today that has all black numbers. And today, today, my request from you as our people and you as our legislatures my request for a tax increase would be zero. Zero. I'll end by just saying that I can't Thank you enough, especially our people. As we traveled the land and we passed a road bond referendum that some may have thought wasn't going to pass, we passed it in 54 out of 55 counties in some way, the good people of Ritchie County. I need to go out and talk to them. <laughs> but we passed it by 73% of the vote. An amazing, amazing accomplishment by you not just me, by you. Now, I can't thank our people enough and you enough for believing and believing in me. I coach. I coach for the players. You're the players. I don't coach for myself. The people of West Virginia are the players. I coach for them. And I coach for our school. And our school is our state. That's what I do. That's what I've done forever. Now, I would end by just saying this. You honor me all the time by calling me governor. But it would be fine with me if you often decide to call me coach. I thank you. I ask our team that our team does one other thing. I tell them all the time, every time we break it down, we break it down best on three, one, two, three, best. Because I want them to believe they're the best. I want West Virginians to believe you're the best. I don't want us to know our place and know our place should be 50th. I want us to know we're the best. 
So I'm going to ask them, if they would, to break it down for us. Break it down as you always do it, as you do it the way you do it every day. second that's the way we do it all the time but now listen closely to how they're going to do it for us to do tonight do it one more time now we can clap may god bless all of you God bless this great state. We're on our way. Let's go get it done. Thank you. You've been watching West Virginia Public Broadcasting's coverage of Jim Justice's 2018 State of the State Address as this year's 60-day legislative session gets underway. An upbeat governor outlined a plan that included eliminating the business inventory tax, investing in tourism, fighting the opioid epidemic, supporting community and technical college degrees, pay raises, and a multi-billion dollar oil and gas venture with China. We'll be tracking these proposals and more on the legislature today, airing nightly at 6 p.m. beginning tomorrow. Please join us. I'm Andrea Lanham. Thanks for watching tonight.